Good morning. You know what, Robbie? It's always good to be good. I do welcome all of you here to First Christian Church here in Zanesville, Ohio. I welcome those of you worshiping online, those of you online, those worshiping in the sanctuary and those online. Whether this is your first Sunday with us or whether you have been worshiping with us all of your life, it is good to be together today. I have several things to share with you. First, remember to fill out your registration form um, and tear that off and put it in the plates or baskets in the back. Or if you're worshiping online, you can click the Google form link and fill that out there as well. Want to give you an update on COVID. COVID, we got the word last week that we're in low. The hospital has removed all of its masks requirements. So masks are optional. That is up to you and your decision to wear a mask or not. So we will not be encouraging or requiring masks for the foreseeable future, which you know what that means. That means as soon we will pass trays for offering and communion. We're hoping to have that in place by Consecration Sunday on the 23rd. So elders and deacons, we are meeting this Thursday to work through the logistics of passing trays. This Thursday the 13th at 7 o'clock here in the sanctuary. Crop Walk is today, and our youth will be participating in that. They are doing it a little different. They are meeting at 4 o'clock downtown, and they will be walking to a number of the service agencies like Christ Table, Eastside Ministries, all of those that serve the least of these. They will be walking by them. They will be stopping and having a prayer at that spot and then moving to the next place. So if you see one of our young people and want to make a donation to Crop Walk, go right ahead and do that. Or you can give that donation directly to Kim Paul. So the Crop Walk is today. And then next Sunday is Super Bowl. And um, Bill Factor has been selling tickets before and after worship, so you can see him. They're $5. And Bill told me this morning that they will have available at the Super Bowl um, the COVID booster shot and the flu shot. So you can have a little lunch, a little soup, and a shot. I would probably need the shot and then the soup is my comfort. So whatever works, if you want to do that there, you can or not. But at least let's participate in this um, benefit to, that helps the hungry of our community. On Saturday, October 22nd, is Trunk or Treat from 4.30 to 6 p.m. We need trunks so our little treaters can... Visit them. The sign up for trunks is on the bulletin board. Please consider doing that. It is an evening that's lots of fun and a way for us to reach out into the community, to the neighbor kids, and things like that. So please participate in that. And I've had several people ask, can we help with the hurricane relief? Absolutely. Week of Compassion has put out a plea for funds to help with the relief following Fiona and Ian, Ian, however you pronounce that one. And you can do so by making your offering and indicating that it is for hurricane relief. And it will get sent directly there. And we can compassion those donations go directly to relief. That is not funds for overhead. That is directly for relief. So if you want to give through an organization that you know is going to fund it straight to the people, Week of Compassion is the way to go. Consecration Sunday is October 23rd. That is just in two weeks if I'm doing my math right. All of the stewardship materials will be going out in the mail this week. They will also be available online. 
One of the things that you're familiar with is the ministry opportunities that you fill out and check out, check which you want to be involved in this year. That will be in paper form, but we also have that online. So you'll be able to just click through what you want to do and serve in the coming year. If you have any questions about any of it that you receive, you can just give me a call and I would be happy to help you. That is all of our announcements. No, it's not. I lied or I was mistaken. That's a better way to go about it. Over here is a round table. And on it are those beautiful posters that were hanging up on the glass at the beginning of our series of the Lord's Prayer. There's a, we've got a couple started, but my absolute favorite one is the one on temptation, which is today. And you may see me jump over there in color if I, if I find some time that I'm not busy during worship. But that might not happen, so you, but you can at any time go over in color. Now let us begin our worship with our prelude. Good morning, and welcome on October 9th, Sunday, at our 8.30 service. Would you join me for the call to worship? <clears throat> Holy God, we gather as your people. We long to know you and to live in your way. Keep us safe and secure in your compassionate hands.
as you lead and guide us, touch our hearts and minds. Please continue to stand for our opening song, 97, Fairest Lord Jesus. Holy God, we gather as your people. Whoops. <laughs> okay. I'm going to read it all. <laughs> we long to know your will and to live in your way. Keep us safe and secure in your compassionate hands. Lead us into new paths of love and service. As you lead and guide us, Touch our hearts and minds so that our lives fill with joy and praise. Would you, we just did the first Lord Jesus, didn't we? <laughs> uh, Almighty God, we gather as the body of Christ this morning to boldly offer you our prayers and praise. You alone are worthy of our praise. Prepare our hearts and minds to worship you so that we may be fully present to you, setting aside any cares or concerns. Let our words spoken and sung be yours who are. In the name of the Father, may. Amen. Our heart in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sin, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And I have to confess, it was my fault. I did the call to worship twice. You got it now. 
We continue our exploration of the Lord's Prayer. Hear once again the word of the Lord found in the Gospel of Matthew. Pray then in this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have also forgot, forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to this time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. This is the word of life. So we come to our time of sharing and giving back. In my pocket today, down deep in the pocket, down, down deep in this pocket, there it is, there it is, I have money. Now some of this money was my money, and some of this money when I said what I was going to do to it, people started handing me. Because that's who we are as a people of God, is we share. Now, we don't have any children in this 8.30 worship this morning, but at 10.30, we will most likely have some children, and I'm going to give this money to the children. I've got lots of ones. I'll pass those out to them. There's more ones, lots of ones. I'll pass that out to them. I got a few fives, I got a 10, and I got a couple 20s. I'm going to give that money away. And then I ask, what do you want to do with it? If you had all this money, what would you do with it? Stick it, Stick it in the bank. Exactly. Give it back to somebody. Or go out to eat. That's what we do. When we have this money that we are blessed with, we have to decide what we're going to do with it. And today we are focusing on temptation. And we are so tempted to hoard all the money for ourselves. But as disciples, as followers of Christ, we are called to share out of our abundance, share what we've been given back, that 10%, that tithe, we've been asked to give back, or more our offerings. So as we come to this time of sharing, think about what you're tempted to hold back and not share and ask God to help you let go and share as it is intended to share. Let us pray. God of grace and goodness, throughout the ages you have looked after the needs of your children we thank you for your love and compassion. Bless these gifts and look with favor on the things we do in your name. May we show others your tender love. Make us responsive to the high calling of Jesus as we offer you our lives and these gifts in your name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> The dark seems safer than the light, and everyone has a heart that loves to hide. I'm a mess and so are you. We fit walls nobody can get through. Yeah. 
that it may be hard, but the best thing we could ever do, ever do, bring your brokenness and I'll bring mine, cause love can heal what hurt divides, and mercy's waiting on the other side. If we're honest, if we're honest, don't pretend to be something that you're not. Living life afraid of getting caught. There is freedom found when we lay our secrets down at the cross, at the cross. So bring your brokenness and I'll bring mine. Cause love can heal what hurt divides and mercy's waiting on. If we're honest, we could change our lives, we could set us free, it's what we need to be, Bring your brokenness and I'll bring mine. Cause love can heal what hurt divides. And mercy's waiting on the other side. If we're on a If we're honest, if we're honest, please join me in an attitude of prayer. We come this morning and I share with you that Virgil Unteed is home but is in continued need of prayers for healing and strength and he's getting frustrated with the whole thing so <laughs> a little bit of patience as well. I want to share with you that Lincoln Bunting, this is the grandson of Paul and Sharon Krause. He was in the hospital this past week with COVID. He is now home, but continues to need our prayers. And Katie Burkett needs prayer. Sharon Wise um, was hospitalized and then in rehab, and she will be going home tomorrow under hospice care. So please keep Sharon in prayer. And then we have the family and friends of Juanita Wilson. She has been on our prayer list for quite a while, and she began her eternal life this past Wednesday. Let us come to the Lord. Oh, Lord God, we give you thanks for all your gifts to us, for our daily bread, for our health, for each breath we take, for our freedoms to choose, for the gifts of your word, your power, your love, our hearts, our lives are overflowing with your goodness. Help us, O oh God, to continue to be followers of Jesus, to multiply what you have given us, to risk spreading your word and perhaps see it misunderstood, to share your love with others only to have it rejected, to take chances by doing good to those who have not done good. Help us be faith-filled and desire to increase your glory and your goodness everywhere that we go. 
Lord, we pray for the church that is gathered today, both here and around the world. May your church grow. May it continue to encourage people and continue to care for your children. Lord, we pray for those who are poor in body or poor in spirit, for those oppressed and heavy laden, for those sick or in despair, especially those that we have shared aloud this morning and those that we hold close in our hearts. Oh, Lord, we thank you for all that you do in this world and all that you do in our lives. And we ask that you strengthen us and care for us and help us pass over the temptations that come our way and lead us and help us to follow your Son, in whose name we pray. Amen. As we prepare to come to the Lord's Supper, as we prepare to come here and share this feast, I remind you that all are welcome. Whether you have come from afar or just next door, whether you are in this sanctuary or worshiping at home, you are welcome here. Let us prepare by singing together, you satisfy the hungry heart. Last week, we celebrated World Communion Sunday. And in honor and celebration of that day, Marcy Coleman made this beautiful pyramid. Make sure you take time to walk by and see it up close. It is of the people of the world sitting around the table, each unique, each different. We all are welcome here. And this pyramid symbolizes the openness of Christ's table to all. That's what Christ intended. Christ intended for everyone to receive the gift of forgiveness and the gift of eternal life. And on that night, when he transformed the Passover feast into this feast, he took a loaf of bread and he blessed it, and he broke it, and he said, This is my body broken for each of you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. And then he took a cup, 
And he gave thanks for it, and he said, This is my blood which is shed for each of you. Take and drink in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Father, we confess our sins and shortcomings. We thank you for the heavenly grace you have given us through your Son. By accepting your invitation to this table, we have made the choice to accept your compassionate love. As we receive the bread and cup, we renew and affirm our relationship with you as the Lord and Savior of our lives. We ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. as one in Christ. We eat of the bread of life. As children of God, we drink from the cup of salvation. Lead us not into temptation. It seems like that is what life is filled with. And Jesus, being fully human, knew of temptation. He knew of this in ways that we cannot even imagine. For it was right after his baptism that he went into the wilderness prompted by the Holy Spirit. And while he was there for 40 days fasting, the, Satan came and Satan tempted him. We hear of this temptation in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus said to him, Again it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to the very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their splendor. And he said to him, all these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him and suddenly angels came and waited on him. May God add blessing and understanding to the reading of the word. This weekend, I attended the wedding of my dear friend Susan's son. Susan and I met when our sons were in the same kindergarten class. And these two boys, along with a couple of others in the neighborhood, created a community. For years, we all had an open-door policy for this little posse of friends and neighbors. We watched over all of them as if they were our own. 
our lives shifted and changed as they do, and some of us moved away from the neighborhood. So last night at David's wedding, we were all together again. For the first time in many years, we were all in the same place, and it was so much fun. Last night, though, I knew this morning was coming, so I gave myself a 9.30 curfew, which meant I needed to leave the reception about 8 o'clock. The dance floor was just opening up to everyone as 8 o'clock rolled around, so I started saying my goodbyes. Well, my friend Betsy was not having any of that. She said I couldn't leave until I danced one dance with her and Susan. She grabbed my hand, we went and got Susan, and on to the dance floor we went. We danced and laughed our way through Dancing Queen. And as the music transitioned to staying alive, I began to bow off the dance floor and wish them all well. But again, Betsy was not having any of that. And she grabbed my hand and said, just one more. I gave in, and I got my John Travolta moves on. And as Stan Alive began to fade, Betsy once again says, just one more. I gave in to the temptation, and I danced for at least another 20 minutes or so with my friends. The temptation to stay at the party was too great. I was there in the midst of my posse that I hadn't been with in over 15 years. So I'm a little tired this morning. You might notice my voice isn't quite as strong as it usually is because I spent that time dancing with my friends. That's how temptation works. We give in to just one little dance and that makes the next one harder to resist and the next one harder. And before we know it, we're getting home much, much later than the 9 p.m. curfew that had been self-imposed. If only life was filled with temptation of dancing with friends, it would be much easier to navigate. Unfortunately, we face much more difficult temptations, ones that lead us into paths of addiction and things that harm ourselves and others, things that take us away from God instead of building us closer to God. The scripture I read gives us insight into the temptations that Jesus faced following his baptism. He is confronted by the devil and how Jesus handles this can teach us a lot about facing the temptations we deal with in our lives. The way Matthew is telling this story of Jesus is very Jewish. There are echoes of the Old Testament all the way through this narrative. Jesus goes into the desert for 40 days, which is symbolic of the 40 years that the Israelites spent wandering in the desert before entering the promised land. But it is also a reminder of the 40 years that Moses spent on Mount Sinai to receive God's Ten Commandments. In spite of the fact that God was present with them in the cloud of fire and the cloud of light when they had the tabernacle. The Israelites still wrestled with what it meant to be God's people and they gave in to temptation. Indeed, that's what Israel means, the one who wrestles with God. Matthew sets the scene of Jesus' own temptation in the wilderness using this very imagery. And the temptation of Jesus reflect the temptations of Israel in the desert, and they can be warnings for us today. The devil shows up to offer Jesus shortcuts to his ministry, which reflect the mission of Israel, beginning each one, if you are the son of God. The devil's first temptation is to get Jesus to use his power to transform stones into bread. Note that I mentioned that Jesus had been fasting for 40 days. So this make some bread for yourself had to been really tempting. When we're hungry, food is a great temptation. 
Jesus was wanting the bread. In his full humanness was wanting the bread. Many Jews in Jesus' day were hoping for a new exodus out of their practical slavery under the Roman occupation. They were looking for a Messiah who looked a lot like a new version of Moses, complete with God's provision of manna from heaven. Turning stones into bread would be a sure sign for the people that the Messiah they were looking for had finally arrived. And Satan wants to, Jesus to conform to the people's expectations. Become Moses for them. Make bread for yourself. Feed your own individual hunger and show the people that you are the Messiah. Jesus understood, however... That this temptation was about focusing on the product rather than the source. The Israelites wandering in the desert eventually got sick of eating manna day after day and pined to go back to Egypt where the menu had more variety. They ignored the fact that God was the one keeping them alive and leading them toward the promised land. Bread alone, remember just a few weeks ago, bread alone wasn't enough to keep the people satisfied. Jesus responded to the devil by quoting Moses' own warning to the people. God humbled you by letting you hunger, then by feeding you with manna, with which neither you nor your ancestors were acquainted, in order to make you understand that one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Jesus was not dependent on his own ability to provide for himself and his people, but on God's provision and God's promises. Jesus knew that the devil's temptation was to produce a product rather than rely on the ultimate source from whom every good thing comes. Both he and his people needed a steady diet of God and the word to sustain them for the long haul. We're tempted. We're tempted to seek that quick and easy route to fill our empty bellies, our empty souls, to soothe our aches, our pains, our illnesses. We fill up on products, both spiritual and material, that satisfy our needs for just a short while. Jesus invites us to consider that the only thing that will truly satisfy us is being in the presence of God who supplies our very needs in our soul. That's the reason Jesus tells his disciples and us to pray for our daily bread and not for bread for a lifetime. Just today. Give me my bread just today. When we feed on the word of God and reflect on the bread of life, We are on that diet that leads us towards eternity, that helps us fight off the temptations of this world. The second of Satan's temptations was to get Jesus to jump off the pinnacle of the temple into the Kidron Valley. The fall would have meant certain death, but the devil was certain that Jesus could do it and come out unscathed. Satan even tries to bait Jesus by using scripture, quoting Psalm 91, verses 11 and 12, to pump up the fact that God would provide angelic safety as he plummeted towards the earth. He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. In response, Jesus cites Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 16, which refers to Israel's testing of God in the wilderness by complaining about their lack of water. Do not put the Lord your God to the test. In other words, Jesus is saying, you want me to jump off this pinnacle? Not going to happen. Scripture says, do not test God. Jesus had no doubts about the presence of God with him, and he had nothing to prove to Satan. At the very beginning of his ministry, he was convinced he was following the will of his father. Just prior to this, Jesus had been baptized in the Jordan, and the heavens opened up, and he had seen the Spirit of God descending like like a dove on him, 
and a voice from heaven saying, This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. In fact, those are the last words of chapter 3. With him I am well pleased. It is immediately after these words that the Spirit drives Jesus out into the wilderness. And he begins his 40 days of fasting. And then the temptation comes. And Jesus is saying to us, even when you are out in the wilderness for 40 days, for 40 years, for however long, do not put the Lord your God to the test. The lesson here is we don't tempt God. We don't test God. We don't make our plans and expect God to bless them. We don't engage in risky behavior and expect God to protect us. We don't bend scripture to suit our purposes. When we do this, we have taken the role of leader in our own faith journey. And as Christians, we are followers. Followers of Jesus Christ. When we examine our focus section for today, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, Adam Hamilton encourages us to put a comma after lead us and focus that we are followers. It is very clear that we are to ask God to lead us, to guide us, And remember that we are the followers. We take the lead in our faith. When we take the lead in our faith, we are putting God to the test. Okay, I'm going to run and do this. Take care of me. Watch after me. I'm making decisions of what I'm going to do. Adam Hamilton writes, this petition is asking God to lead us. We lead ourselves into temptation when we... deliberately place ourselves in tempting situations or when we entertain the idea of doing something we know is wrong. But if we ask God, God will lead us. The invitation of Jesus is come follow me. And the life of a Christian disciple is a life of following him. Following Jesus and allowing God to lead us is the most effective way to guard against temptation. Being connected with other Christians and being active within a faith community are the most effective ways to see and hear God's guidance in your life. Those within our faith circles are the light of Christ and the voice of God when temptation grows too great. 12-step programs are built on this very premise. Being strong because you're surrounded by others. Satan's final ploy to tempt Jesus withholding, is withholding power over all the kingdoms of the world. Verses 8 and 9 read, The devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to them, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Satan was offering Jesus to be a political and military leader. Note the world is being offered. Note that the world that's being offered to him is the world in its current condition. Here Satan is saying, have it all. It lays out before you just as it is. But Jesus was brought into this world to bring about the kingdom of heaven, to bring about the kingdom of God. And Jesus responds with, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Sound familiar? Yeah. Jesus is referencing Deuteronomy 6 verse 13 which is a nod to that first commandment adam hamilton points out we often think of temptation as an individual thing but like so much of the lord's prayer this petition asks for god to lead us not just me entire nations and societies are capable of sin 
Think of the rise of anti-Semitism in Nazi Germany or the Rwandan ge genocide in 1994 or slave ownership in our own country. We must constantly guard ourselves against the temptation to sin as a society, to seek power or wealth at the expense of others who live here among us. This petition is not just for God to lead us as individuals, but for God to lead the church, the universal church, delivering us from the evil of societal sin and helping us to actively oppose it in our day. As individuals, we are connected in this community of faith. And we have opportunity to lean into one another and into the word of God when we are faced with times of temptation. And when we pray this Lord's Prayer together every week, we are reminded and we are empowered by those words, lead us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us close by praying together those sacred words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If you hear God calling in your life, feel Jesus saying, come, follow me, and you want to take that step, into a life with Jesus and away from the temptations of the world, I invite you to come forward as we all stand and sing together, Be Still My Soul. Are you coming up here too? No, I'm here. You're gonna sit there? Are you coming up to, to rededicate your life? All right. All right, so Mark, turn around here, face everyone. You all may be seated. What a joy this is today to have both Mark and Pam come up. This is Mark Wilson, and Mark has been um, worshiping with us on Wednesdays for quite a while now. And um, just recently has started coming on Sunday mornings at 8.30. And Mark has decided this morning that he wants to rededicate his faith and join this one and be a part of this community and allow this community surround him with the faith of Jesus. And so, Mark, it is my pleasure to extend to you the right hand of Christian fellowship and ask you, do you once again proclaim that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of our living God, and do you once again take him as your personal Lord and Savior? Amen. 
And Pam has come forward because Pam said to me last week, I've never been baptized and I want to do that. And so she, that's right. And so she comes forward this morning and I ask you, Pam, do you believe that Jesus is the Christ and the Son of God and do you take him as your personal Lord and Savior? Yes. Yes, she says with great excitement. Let me take both your hands and let us all pray. Oh, Lord God, what thanks we give you this morning for the spirit moving in our midst and awakening in these lives that stand here before you as they grow ever closer in their faith and in their spirit to you and your son, Jesus Christ. Pour your Holy Spirit over them, watch over them, and help them be integrated into this congregation as your children. We pray all this in your son's holy name and all God's people say, Amen. Now I'm going to pray. We're going to have our benediction. <laughs> oh, Lord God, we give thanks for how you lead us in our lives. Send us out into this world to be your light and your love so we can continue to be your church. Amen. All right, I'm going to leave the two of them up here so you can come and greet them. They're going to come up here and greet you. So just stay here and receive all that love. <laughs>